we're back. We're back with another new show, The Perfect Match. This is season two, episode one, Ready, Set, Match. Y'all ready? We're going to have some fun with this show. We're going to have some, I can feel it. This is going to be a good time. What's good, y'all? Welcome and welcome back to the channel. I'm Tammy. This is Tammy Talks. The Perfect Match. Y'all wanted me to talk about it. We're going to talk about it. It's a lot of people on this show. <laughs> a lot of people on this show. I don't know every single person, but I know a good amount of these Netflix celebrities. Is that what they're called? Because they're Bravo celebrities, Netflix celebrities. I know a good amount of these, but this is going to be a good time. So before we get started, if you are brand new or you're returning from Love Island or some other Netflix show that I do, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button if you enjoy so you are notified every time I post a video. So six episodes dropped today. Six. So what that means is you're going to get six different videos from me. All I ask is that we keep it respectful in the comments, which means no spoilers. So whatever episode that I am recapping, that's as far as I have watched. All right. So let's keep it respectful for me, for you, for others that are kind of watching it episode by episode as well. Let's start off by meeting some of the cast. So I have their pictures up for this episode and probably for next episode too since it's a lot of moving parts so that way you guys can see exactly who i'm talking about so let's start with harry jowsey all right harry is um the guys are down below the ladies are up top so harry is from too hot to handle season one we have micah who is from love is blind season four y'all remember how we talked about micah okay micah's micah's trying to do a rebrand of sorts, okay? Then we have Tulu. I hope I'm saying her name correct. She is from the Netflix game, The Trust. Did not watch it. Heard it was really, really good, though. Then we have Stav Stavon. He wasn't Steven. He was Stavon. He is from Too Hot to Handle Season 3. Then we have Izzy, you know, my fave, Paper Plates, who is from Love Island Season 5. We have Jessica, who is from Love is Blind Season 6. Remember, she was um, the, the single mother caught up in that love triangle situation who really dodged a bullet when we think about it by not getting picked by Jimmy, but, you know. So then we have Kaz Bishop. Kaz is from Dated and Related. I've never even heard of that show, but this man is fine, so I'm sure he'll be matched up with no, no problems. We have Elise. Elise is from Too Hot to Handle Season 5. I did watch that show. I, like, kind of low-keyed recapped it. Not for real, but I remember her being, like, kind of annoying on there. We have Christine, who was from Too Hot to Handle Season 5. I do remember her being on there, and she... I didn't have an issue with Christine. Christine... So that means her and old boy ain't together no more. Okay. So then we have Dominique Defoe. Dominique is from Too Hot to Handle season four. So what I'm getting from this cast is that Too Hot to Handle, <laughs> nobody stays together. Got it. So we have Holly Scarfone. She is from Too Hot to Handle season three. We have Alara from Dated and Related. Dom Gabriel from The Mo season one. And he's back from Perfect Match. So you want to be a reality star, sir. I don't fault you. He's very attractive, too. He's very attractive, too. He ain't no cast, but he's he's a looker. We have Bretan, who was from Too Hot to Handle Season 4. We have Brighton, who worked my everlasting nerve this first episode. My God. He's from Squid Game, The Challenge. I didn't even watch that. Then we have Nigel Jones, who was from Too Hot to Handle Season 4. Nigel is very attractive as well. We have Xanthi, who is from The Circle Season 5. I loved Xanthi on there. She is a ball of energy. So, good on her. We have Jake Cunningham from The Ultimatum Season 1. I thought Jake ended... Whoa. I thought Jake ended up with... Oh, girl. Okay. 
So Jake is back single, clearly. Then we have Trevor from Love is Blind Season 6. Um, and y'all know that that season was a mess. We have Chris from Dated and Related. Justin from Surviving Paradise. Melinda from Too Hot to Handle Season 2. And apparently she is the Dated and Related host. Okay, girl, get the bag on both sides, okay? But let's get started. So all the couples are coming, or all the singles, I should say, are coming in. Everybody's kind of sizing each other up, seeing who they like, who they don't like. We're seeing um, some of their personality is starting to shine through. Tulu is a lot, right? Face card, it will not decline. That is that She is gorgeous, right? I like her short little haircut, but she seems... I don't know. <laughs> like, I want to like her. Her personality is vibrant and bubbly. But something about her, I feel like she's going to rub me the wrong way. I can feel it. So Nick comes in and he introduces kind of what the point of the show is. So basically, these, couple, these singles are going to couple up. And they're going to go through a string of challenges. And whatever couple wins the challenge is going to get the opportunity to, one, go on a romantic date. And two, they're going to go to the boardroom. Once they're in the boardroom, they're going to be able to mix and match who they feel should be matched up. At the end of this, uh, if you are not matched with somebody, you are voted off the island. Otherwise, if you make it to the end, I can think it's like the top three or so couples, everybody that has ever been on this show for this season is going to come in and vote on who the perfect match is. You then win, um, I'm assuming, a pot of prize money. And then you and your match, you two are going to get an all-expense-pay romantic getaway. Only for you clearly, like Don, who, Dom, who won, to break up and come on back for another season. All right? So, let's start. So, Nick said we're going to start with the first game, which is called Let It Roll. So, they have these really big dimes. One die has every person that is there in the villa so far it has their face. The other die has an, uh, a call to action, an activity, something that you need to do with that particular person. So we're getting body shots and, and toe sucking and truth or dares and two truths and a lie. We're getting all like kind of like the basic party games, I guess you can call it. So Brighton... In his confessional, let's it be known that winning the game is his priority. Now, while him and Dominique are kind of eyeing each other, she did ask this man to make her a lemon drop. Girl, we are not at the bar. I hollered when he was like, what do you want? Girl, you want you want a shot or you want a glass of wine? But we're not going to be back here mixing and shaking. This is not the bar. But she wanted a lemon drop. I was with him. I don't know how to make that. <laughs> I don't know how to make that, sis. So, but while Dominique has eyes for Brayton, he has said that winning is his first priority. Winning is like his only priority. So it doesn't matter if it's with her or someone else. He's there to get the bag, sis. So, which is fine. Hey, hey. So we then get um, Paper Plates, a.k.a. Izzy. So Izzy is saying that he feels old because not only is he the oldest at, I guess, 30, 30, 31, but he also feels kind of inferior stature-wise because, you know, Izzy's not a super tall man. So Izzy's like 5'10", which is not bad. It's not bad, but it's not tall. So he feels a little bit inferior, but we see that none of the girls are feeling Harry. Why, might you ask? Because Harry apparently is an F-boy. So I don't know much about Harry at all. But apparently Harry, the shows that Harry has been on, he's been kind of, you know, messing over the ladies. So a lot of the ladies know this about him because I'm sure they all studied each other to see what show they're on, what series. And all the girls are kind of like, hmm. Mm. And Harry does seem like a bit of an ass. He does. If we're being honest, he absolutely does. So we see Dominique telling Brighton that she's already thinking about walking out of this with him. Hand in hand, uh, riding into the sunset. And the way his responses should have told you that he's not the one. 
he kind of looked and was like, oh, already? Because he's there about the bag. See, you, it's lust. It's lust, Dominique, that you're, that you're headed towards. Nonetheless, they decide to match up. Boom. We then see Harry and Elise decide to match up. Now, Elise is a hornball. We saw that on Too Hot to Handle. So even though Elise has her suspicions, she's kind of guarded when it comes to Harry, got to keep her good eye on him, she still decides to go on and match up with him. Boom. Two couples matching. That's what I like to see. Let's not drag this out. Let's match up with everybody right away. So we see Izzy. Now, Izzy has come into this with a crush on Micah. Okay, so he's talking to her, and instead of, like, getting to know her organically, he is rattling off everything he knows about her from her season. When they were walking in, he already walked up on her and was like, I know you, we're on the same show, and it's like, paper plates, please, temper yourself, sir, tuck your thirst in, ugh, Izzy, oh my god, I was, uh, the secondhand embarrassment was just oozing off of me for him. I couldn't do it. So he's telling her all this stuff, and she's like, all right, well, you already know me. So Micah is in her confessional saying that Izzy is kind of nerdy. He's giving her the same vibe that Pa did. We know how Pa, you know, how that happened on their show, so, or on her season, I should say. So she's not with it. You know what I'm saying? You remind me, you remind me of my ex. So not really feeling it. So Micah tries to smooth on over to Kaz. Okay. They're talking. First conversation. General conversation. And she was like, so you want to match? <laughs> Kaz was like, we got to talk to other people. Secondhand embarrassment. I don't want to be so embarrassed for these people. <laughs> I can't take secondhand embarrassment. So he basically told her, look, if we have to match up, we can. But, you know, we got to talk to other people. Micah, that tells you everything you need to know. So <laughs> Cass ends up going over and talking to Tolu. Excuse me, Izzy goes over and starts talking to Tolu. So Tolu and Izzy match. She said they got that bald head connection going. I said, oh, girl. You don't know that he don't have real plates in his house, but that's okay. We're going to leave the past in the past. But they they have a connection. She thinks he's very chill because we know Izzy. He's not. Izzy has a temper. Izzy turns into the red angry emoji. But you got to figure that out for yourself, girl. So they match. So now we have three matches so far. So we get Xanthi and Stevan, who are having a really good conversation. He's interested. Um, she's really not. She's really not. He said that he gets uh, mistaken for Pete Davidson. Oh, I don't see Pete, but Machine Gun Kelly, sure. Sure. I don't think I would see him and think Pete Dave. I, I guess I can see why people think that. I wouldn't, but... Xanthi's not feeling his vibe at all, and we can tell. She's not feeling it. She's not feeling it. Um, so Xanthi decides to slide on over to Kaz, and while he thinks she's crazy, and she keeps saying that she has Greek spice, in my experience, Greek food is not spicy. But if she says that she has Greek spice, I'm going to let you have it. Xanthi is a huge personality. She was a huge personality on the circle. Kaz is saying that she gives a little Harley Quinn tease. I don't know if I think she does, but I can see it. I can see it. But they they hit it off enough that they are going to match, which basically means that Micah and Stevan, that's your match, girl. Hope it works out for y'all. So everybody goes to their rooms for the evening so that they can retire for the night, have more small talk, get to know each other. Hell, everybody needs to be getting in the tub the way everybody is glistening from the sweat of it all. So Brighton and Dom start, Dominique start arguing about whether yoga is a workout or not. And I said, what are we doing? What are we doing? Why are y'all arguing about this? 
yoga is a workout. I have done hot yoga before. I have done aerial yoga before. It is a workout. Brighton is being an ass about it, though. And he's like, it's not a workout. Pilates is. This is not a workout. And, like, they are yelling. Like, when I tell you arguing, the way I would have been so done with him, because you're not about to argue with me about this. Why is it this big of a deal that you're causing a fight? So, like, everybody else can hear them. So you can tell, you can see the attraction leaving her body, but then she's in her confessional saying that she's turned on by the arguing. It's the toxicity for me, sis. Like, let's just move on. So we get to the first challenge, which is motion in the ocean. So there are the, every couple, every pair is going to be on these like little apparatus, we'll call them that are suspended in the air. And they have to use a, some type of motion to get their apparatus from point A to point B. Whoever gets to point B the fastest first it's going to be the winner, and they are going to not only get a romantic date that night, but they're going to get the opportunity to go to the boardroom so that they can start, you know, mixing and matching the, the matches and messing up, you know, effing stuff up. So it's very simple, right? It's physics. You need to rock yourself in a motion that is going to move your apparatus forward. It's, it's simple. It is simple physics. So Dominique is telling Brighton, this is what we need to do. And he's a smart ass when her and was like, what was your major in college? When she said engineering, I said, Nick, listen to her. So she's telling him how to do it. He like clearly doesn't want to do it. I don't know if he's a misogynist. I don't know if he's condescending. I don't know if he's just an ass or if this is his way of flirting. But it's not only is it not working for me. But it's not working for Dominique either. So Harry and Elise win because they are rocking with each other. Pelvic thrust, okay? But that's moving, it's moving their apparatus forward. So we get to the end and Harry and Elise have won. Dominique and Brighton were second. Everybody else was like still back at the finish line. Physics, y'all. Physics. Come on, people. So we get like a little joint confessional situation at the end and Brighton is saying how they only got as far as they got because he looked at what Harry and Elise were doing and he started to copy them. Dominique is like, no, that is what I told you to do in the first place, which it is. And he's like, well, we each had a strategy and a plan, did we not? She gets emotional. She starts crying because she feels that he talks down to her and does. He does. He talks down to you. Um, so now he's like, no, I'm just saying we both have a plan. He's making all these faces. He's being condescending. He is belittling her. Do not cry for that man, sis. Don't. Don't. Mm -mm. Because you know that you were in the right. He knows that he was in the wrong. The fact that he tried to mansplain that to you. Okay. So later at the date, Harry and Elise are having seemingly a good time. Harry wants a relationship. He's ready to settle down, whereas Elise is kind of guarded because we know who you are. So Harry's asking her if she trusts him, and she's like, well, shit, not yet. I mean, my, we, just, we just met. We literally just met. So the way Harry was sweating, he's hot. Get you a glass of ice water, sir. Whatever liquor you were drinking, you don't need because it is it is pouring. It is pouring out of you right now. So the next morning they wake up, they go to the boardroom. So they are going, they have decided, Harry and Elise, that they're going to stay together. They decide almost immediately that they're going to send Dominique out on a date. So basically what happens is when Dominique goes on her date, she has the opportunity to decide to stay with that date or she can decide to switch over and stay with the person that she's originally paired with. So when Harry and Elise come back to the villa and they're all pensive and this was so hard. Oh my God. We don't know where we're going. Yeah. Y'all who said it was going to be easy. <laughs> 
<laughs> so they come back and everybody's nervous and they're like, boom, we're going to send Dominique and we're going to send Tulu out on dates. Tulu had me hollering because she was definitely eating. She said, let me put my plate down. So while they go to get ready, I, did y'all hear my stomach growl? Ignore that. But while they go to get ready, um, every like, I forgot who was it, but one person asks Brighton uh, how he, is he nervous? And he gets all swollen in the chest. I'm fine. You're like the eighth person to ask. I'm sh No, it couldn't have been eight because there's only 10 of y'all there. There's only 10 of y'all there for, for one. You're one person that drops it down to nine. And Dominique showed didn't ask you nothing. That drops it down to eight. Tulu didn't ask you anything because she walked away too. That drops it down to six. And then Harry and Elise. So you had maybe one or two people ask you. But then he kind of admits, yes, he's nervous, whatever the case. So we see that Tulu is out on a date with Dom. I want to know why Dom has come back. I want to know why they picked Dom, because apparently Dom and Dom and Harry have some of the same exes. This is about to get messy. I'm all here for it. So let me know what you guys thought about episode one and episode one only. Subscribe to the channel. Thumbs up the video if you don't do anything else. And I will see you guys for episode two.